Today we're at the Putnam Arts Council. It's our first on-site show. We're in Mayapack and we are joined by Joyce Picone, who is the executive director and president here. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Joyce. Well, thank you for coming and, and listening to us and oh, telling our story. Absolutely. So we are doing a series and we, we really want to shed uh, a light on, on, mm -hmm. on the arts uh, in, in Putnam County. I think we have, we have a lot to tell. And you know you have been around forever. Well, not you, but the, the Putnam Arts. <laughs> I've been here a long time too. <laughs> <laughs> has been around for a while. Uh, you celebrated your fiftieth or fifty-first anniversary, was it? Fiftieth anniversary in twenty thirteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, if anybody should be talking about uh, what's happening in the art community, you guys should. So I wanted to just let folks know where you are, what you're doing, and mm -hmm. how they can possibly maybe avail of some of the wonderful classes and education that you're providing. Well, fantastic. We're on Kennecut Hill Road in Mayapac, mm -hmm. and we're at the Bellevue Arts Center, and we offer classes in the arts for adults mm -hmm. and for teens and for children year-round. Mm -hmm. So educational component we cover. We have painting classes and drawing classes, pottery classes, fine arts classes, photography. We're also an arts council, and we're the only arts council in all of Putnam, uh, which it distinguishes us from the other arts organizations in that we serve them. So we provide them with funding, um, and we provide technical support. We help them find places to perform and to rehearse and things like that. Oh, that's wonderful. And we do some marketing for them on our website, which mm -hmm. is putnamartscouncil.org. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's year-round as well. So some of, would you like to know some of the I would love that, to, yeah. Okay, some of the folks that we fund. Uh, Hudson Valley Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. um, very popular. Very popular and wonderful at Bosca Bell each mm -hmm. summer. We uh, fund, we support their family nights mm -hmm. and discounted tickets to families. Uh, we uh, support Arts on the Lake, their music concert series and uh, other programs. Uh, the studio around the corner in Brewster. Mm -hmm. uh, the Village of Brewster Film Festival. Wow. Putnam Chorale. Great. Putnam Symphony. Donesburg Chamber, Brewster Theatre Company. Uh, 20 grants will be given out in this uh, 2015 Great. for projects that will happen that are open to the public. Uh -huh. Many of them are free of charge, not all of them, but they're all affordable. Um, and they will happen in 2015 in the borders of Putnam County. I agree. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming on our show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Hey everybody, we're still here, we're at the Putnam Arts Council and we're now downstairs in the Pottery Studio. We just did an interview uh, with Joyce Picone who's given us a nice overview and now we wanted to talk to one of the artists and one of the teachers here. So let me introduce Michael Cole. Michael is busy working here, he's making his, uh, what is that going to be? Mike, is it going to be a, a, a bowl? It what could be a bowl, uh, yeah, let's make a bowl. <laughs> okay, sounds good, sounds good. So, Michael, tell us a little bit about how you got here, what you're doing, what's fun, what are people interested in when they come to you? Yeah, so I took a couple of classes um, in August of 2011, and I got really sort of hooked on pottery, and I kind of delved into it, and um, after the two classes I took, I started just doing rental here at the studio so I could just spend as much time on the wheel as I could. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos, watching people, how they hold their hands, different things that they made. And mm -hmm. so I, I learned how to, I learned the basic rules of pottery pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I still have lots and lots to learn, but um, I learned the rules enough to where I could then know how to break them and make fun, you know, sculpture or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's creative. You can do whatever you want once yeah. you learn the basic rules. So, yeah. So wh when you start, I mean, I'm fascinated because I've never been closer than, you know, the scene and ghost to making pottery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what, what's one of the first things that you tell a student? Well, it's, it's really all about centering. I mean, that's the big trick. It's like when you learn how to ride a bike, you know that feeling when you figure it out. Yeah. Once you figure out the center, once you feel it, then, you know, there's some, still some work to be done. There's other rules that you have to learn, but that's the big one. You have to stay centered. You know, it's such a it's a thing about life. You uh -huh. have to be centered in uh -huh. order for this to work. So, um, yeah. so now once you once you kind of get your shape going, mm -hmm. you remove it from the the wheel, right? And then what what's the next step? Do you put it in, in a kiln? You cook it? Yeah. So you, the first part of the process is to throw, which is what I'm doing here. Then you let it dry to a, to leather hard. You turn it over and then you trim the bottom. Uh -huh. And by, then you create 
a foot on the bottom of it, which is, you know, what the, what the vessel stands on. Uh -huh. After that's dried, then, yeah, it goes into the kiln. It's a two-part process where it gets bisque fired first, and then it goes into the glaze kiln. So, yeah, and it's a definite process, and there's a, a huge amount of patience involved with pottery. I would, I would imagine. Uh, what I, one of the things I've learned is any time I try to rush any part of the process, things go terribly wrong. <laughs> so... <laughs> So from start to finish, how long till you, till you get your finished product? You mean? The actual beautiful vase or bowl or whatever Well, it's it is a little name. bit hard to answer because, um, you know, we don't usually fire the kiln until we have it pretty full. So if there's not a lot of people working, then I sometimes have to wait a while right. until we have a kiln full. But, but basically, you know, three weeks or something like that, we could we could turn it around. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So we're, before we let you go, because yeah. I know you're very busy, uh, I just wanted folks to know a little bit about your your personal background because ah. you have a very interesting history. Yeah, I suppose. There's a lot more to you than pottery, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, a, re your, your I'm a recovering time. actor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of musical theater. That's how I ended up in Oregon. I mean, Oregon. I'm from Oregon. That's how I ended up in um, New York. Uh -huh. and, uh, and somewhere along the way, I met Stephen Schwartz, who's the composer of Wicked and Godspell and other Very other things. Very interesting. So I've been Stephen's assistant for almost 20 years now. Wow, wonderful. And, um, and, you know, in the beginning, all that was I was working in the city, but now most of my work is internet, email, so, which I do from home mostly. Cool. And he lives not far from here, so I go to his house more than I go to the city. But yeah, so um, that's, that's what I do for a living. And I, thankfully, I can actually continue my work even at the studio by checking my, you know, my computer and of all that. Course. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, the thing about that job is you're often in the right place and the right time kind of rolls around once in a while. There you go. Yeah. I got to sing on a couple of soundtracks and things like that. Good so for yeah, you. it's good good stuff. And he's good. a terrific guy. Not a job I would like unless it was somebody who was really appreciative. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, well look, we're gonna send people here. Anybody anybody in, in Mayor Pack, Putnam, all of Putnam that that want to meet Michael and uh, take a spin on the pottery wheel. Come give it Putnam. a try. Absolutely. <laughs> Come to the Putnam Arts Council. Thanks, Michael. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, we're in the Artists' Gallery uh, at the Putnam Arts Council, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Jean Dematsis, who's running a class right now, as you can see. Uh, so you typically teach both watercolor and uh, oil or acrylics? Yes, I have an oil acrylic class on Tuesdays and two watercolor classes here. Okay. Plus um, a workshop on abstracting. Ooh, landscapes. beautiful. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about what's going on right now. Well, this is a mixed class of both beginners and um, intermediate and advanced students. It's usually much larger, but because of the snow, there are 11 people in this class, and I would say about half of them are absent today. Okay. Um, but they are working on landscape. Um, kind of editing photos that I have taken uh -huh. in black and white, and then supplying color to it. And Beautiful. these two are beginning to understand how watercolor works. OK. <laughs> Very intently. Yes, I see, <laughs> I see that. I see that. So uh, what, what would you say are the, uh, the, the basic differences between uh, a watercolor approach and uh, an acrylic approach when one starts either of the two? Well, first, the, the mediums are completely different. One is a very opaque medium that's acrylic, even oil. Um, and they work usually from dark colors to light colors. Uh -huh. And in watercolor, we work just the opposite. We start with the light colors and build them up into darker colors. And it's much more of a kind of a stained glass mm. effect, very jewel-like colors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it's a matter of sensibility. Um, this woman over here, Peg, works in many different media, and she has to kind of think before she puts brush to paper, because if she's working in acrylic or oil, she has to start differently. Mm -hmm. um, but once into it, I guess you, you get the hang of it, yes? Yes, you have to, always have to remember you have to make many errors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Lots of surprises, right? 
So what is the joy of painting for you? For me? Yeah, for you. Oh, you can't think of your ills. You can't think of anything else when you're immersed in any kind of art. So I guess it's the best therapy in the world. Uh -huh. But for me, it's, it's like walking and eating and breathing. I do art every single day. Um, either reading about it, drawing, painting, whatever. I have to have my fix every day. Yeah. And hopefully they will want a fix every day, too. I'm sure that they do. <laughs> well, listen, we thank you so much for taking time. And I understand that uh, you also uh, teach at Heritage Hills and elsewhere, right? Tell us a little yes. bit about that. Um, Heritage Hills has a, a very big activity center. and. Um, they offer courses in many different fields. Mm -hmm. And so I teach a multimedia class there. But most of my classes are here in, um, in this center. Perfect. So we, if we want to find you, we'll just go on the Putnam Arts Council website. Absolutely. And we can send folks over here to sign up for your class. Oh, yes, indeed. There's okay. always room. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you.